Hello, and welcome to this video on Indigenous health resources, searching the gray literature. This is part one of a two-part series, which will focus on health resources from Indigenous-led organizations. The objective of these videos is to access training material highlighting key considerations when conducting Indigenous health research to help you define gray literature and what it's useful for, and to highlight Indigenous health resources where you can find gray literature. Before you embark on these particular videos, we strongly recommend that you view the series of videos by our Indigenous Studies Librarian, Sheila Larocque. They include key considerations that you should keep in mind when conducting Indigenous health research. So to begin, we want to talk a little bit about what is gray literature. Gray literature is that which is not formally published in traditional sources such as books or journal articles. Examples of gray literature might include conference papers and proceedings, theses and dissertations, technical papers or reports from government, international or non-governmental organizations, as well as research that's being published by individual researchers who have ongoing or unpublished studies in their area, for example, preprints. So why is searching gray literature important? Gray literature is a key element of the scholarly evidence beyond scholarly publications. It provides supplemental information that can help you provide evidence and bolster your findings. They function as an alternative source that may be used to overcome possible bias presented by published information. They can be published more quickly and represent more current information. So again, think of preprints being able to be published as soon as the research is completed before going through the peer review process. And gray literature is also more likely to include negative results than the published literature. So in these two videos, we'll be going over a number of Indigenous health resources to help explain why they can be beneficial for you and what types of resources they offer. In this particular video, we'll be focusing on Indigenous-led health information organizations. So we'll be looking at the First Nations Information Governance Center, or FNIGC, the National Collaborating Center for Indigenous Health, or NCCIH, and the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society. So let's begin with the First Nations Information Governance Center. The FNIGC provides quality information that contributes to improving the health and well being of First Nations people in Canada. It includes information from and about surveys, data collected on First Nations reserves and in Northern communities, knowledge translation and dissemination activities by Indigenous populations, education and training and the advancement of the First Nations principles of OCAP, which is the ownership, control, access, and possession of an Indigenous research. The FNIGC has an online library which provides access to national reports and publications, and it also includes Indigenous health resources and tools. They also have a data center online, which provides access to the FNIGC's published data that can be exported for use in presentations, reports, and academic papers. The two primary surveys that are used and disseminated through this tool is the First Nations Regional Health Survey and the First Nations Regional Early Childhood Education and Employment Survey. Please note that not all data is available publicly on this site, and if you're interested in getting more detail, you may have to make a request to the FNIGC to receive that data. So let's do a quick live demo of these two resources to give you a sense of what they offer. On the FNIGC web page, you can access the online library and the First Nations Data Center from the top of the page. Using the online library, you can scroll down and filter by topic. So everything from annual reports to FNIGC research series are available here. You can filter by content type. So looking at everything from one pagers to papers to videos. And finally, you can filter by year published back to 1999. You also are able to use the free text field here. So simply limiting or filtering by a topic will bring up relevant information organized chronologically by date. And I can simply click on one of the links and it will provide me access to valuable information in PDF form that I can download and use for my research. Similarly, the First Nations Data Center provides access to all the information related to the surveys I described earlier. So you have the option of exploring available data, making a data request, or actually accessing some of the data resources available. So by exploring the available data, you can click on learn more. 
And this takes you to the data online page where you can choose any survey that you'd like. You can filter by all of them, or I could look specifically at one of the educational and employment surveys, and I can either choose to filter by individual categories or keep it broad. Then when I run that search, what it does is it gives me access to tabular data based on the survey results from that particular project. So I can see all this information here that's available in tables as well as in charts. And I can actually add these to my workspace and download them so I can include them in publications, in presentations, or any other type of, of research output I might be involved in. So two very useful resources for you to, to gain access to health information from Indigenous-led organizations like the FNIGC. The next resource we'll be discussing is the National Collaborating Center for Indigenous Health, or the NCCIH. The NCCIH is a national Indigenous organization that was established in 2005 by the Government of Canada and funded through the Public Health Agency of Canada. It was built to support First Nations, Inuit and Métis public health renewal and health equity through knowledge translation and exchange. And currently the NCCIH is hosted at the University of Northern BC in Prince George. In terms of resources that the NCCIH offers, it provides access to publications, including but not limited to reports, fact sheets, webinars, podcasts, articles and book chapters, infographics, videos, and interactive resources. Content is also categorized into particular collections that may be of interest, including COVID-19, cultural safety, healthy land, healthy people, and tuberculosis. Let's take a quick look at a live demo of the NCCIH publications page. From the NCCIH main page, you can search on publications. And from there, you can scroll down to all the different publications available to you. You can click on view all knowledge resources. And what it will do is take you to, again, a free text search, the ability to search by health topic with the number of resources included, search by subject, as well as publication type. So again, all of the different resources I mentioned before in the slide and the year it was published. So for example, if I was curious to looking at recent COVID-19 research, I could select COVID-19. And from there, I'll be able to access information specifically about COVID-19 related to indigenous communities. So you can see here, for example, we have one report on enhancing COVID-19 vaccine acceptance in Canada. And by clicking on it, I have access to the resource and can download it from this link below. So a really great way from the publication page to access a wealth of information on particular topics that may be of interest to your own research. Finally, we'll be highlighting the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society. The, the family, Child and Family Caring Society was developed at the Squamish First Nation in 1998 at a national meeting of First Nations Child and Family Service Agencies. The goal of the society is to ensure the safety and well-being of First Nations youth and their families through education initiatives, public policy campaigns, and providing quality resources to support communities. In terms of the types of information that it offers, it has an Indigenous knowledge portal that provides access to annotated literature reviews, which are excellent for research purposes, reports and guides, films, booklets and studies, and journal articles and presentations. All sources are related to Aboriginal children and families in Canada, as well as in similar countries. Let's take a quick look at a live demo of the Indigenous Knowledge Portal from the Society. From the Indigenous Knowledge Portal, you have quick access to educational resources, information sheets, as well as exhibitions. And you can see on the right-hand side, you can limit, again, specifically to COVID-19 resources or educational resources. You can isolate by publication type, you can look by age group, as well as by theme. So as I mentioned before, literature reviews may be an excellent way for you to gain information about literature on certain topics specific to Indigenous communities. So by clicking on that publication type, I can scroll down and see that there are very recent literature reviews on child welfare and pandemics, issues in child development, First Nations child po poverty, and all of these are available to download using a PDF form. So that concludes part one of this video. We strongly welcome your feedback as this is our first time providing modules of this kind. There's a link here to a questionnaire that should take you no longer than three minutes to complete. If you have any future questions or concerns,
please contact your liaison librarian in terms of who supports your college or department on campus. Thank you for your time and for attending this particular video.